Hi, and welcome to the advent of code 2024. Our teleportation device is broken. We got teleported into one of those infinite falling chambers. As we start falling forever, we try to fix the little computer in midair. Can we fix it? Good morning, we are the guys from Germany. I'm Marcel, and I'm here with Frank. Hello, Frank. Hello, Marcel. And Achim. Hello, Achim. Hello, Frank. Hello, Marcel. Hello, world. Today, Marcel was the fastest, and uh, it seems like that we uh, that we have to deal with some kind of shifting register machine. Marcel. Yeah, it's supposed to be an, a, a three-bit computer uh, that has three registers. So basically, uh, like this, it has a register A, B, and C, and a list of instructions and operands. So basically, every uh, every odd number is a is an instruction, and every even number. Uh, or well, not the number itself, but like the position of the number. If that's even, then it's an operand. So every operation has an operand, and there are in total eight different instructions. Uh, they are all listed here. Some of them are division. Some of them are um, XOR operations. Uh, some of them are modular operations and there's a jump and there's also basically a print instruction that prints something to the output and the first thing to do is just to implement the computer itself so that the uh, so that it runs the program and to do that I first used uh, regular expressions to parse the input. I uh, wrote a regular expression that parses the registers and the program. I then simply converted those matches to integers and in the case of the program which is separated by commas I split it by comma and uh, mapped it to an integer so that I simply had a list of integers as my program. You um, also could have uh, taken the, the input and copy it into the code, isn't it? Yeah, that's and true. <laughs> but I, I, I wanted to have the ability to simply uh, switch between the example and my code. And uh, it turned out to be useful in the end because I could check part two easily by simply adding a, another file um, well I guess I could have done that too if I <laughs> simply hard-coded these values but uh, since I always did it like this uh, for every single day I did it for this one too <laughs> okay yeah um, oh right uh, for the operands there are two types there is a combo operand which uh, is a little different than a literal operand. A literal operand is just so for example the number 1 would be an actual 1 and the number 4 would be an actual 4 and so on. But for combo operands only 0 through 3 are the are literal. 4 is register A, uh, 5 is register B and 6 is register C, 7 is unused it's uh, reserved yeah and then there are the different instructions which I just implemented as functions in uh, in Python here I used the registers as global variables uh, also the instruction pointer which basically tells which instruction I'm currently looking at is a global variable I have some uh, utility functions to get either a combo operand or a little li literal operand which is based on the instruction so for example the ADV instruction 
uh, says that it uses a combo operand, the BXL uses a literal operand, and, and so on. So it's different per instruction. And then it's also important that every instruction uh, moves the instruction pointer forward by two, so basically skipping to the next instruction. The only one that doesn't do that is the jump non-zero instruction. It only jumps if register A isn't zero, so it's non-zero. If register A is zero, it simply advances the instruction pointer by two, and otherwise it gets the next literal operand and basically jumps there. In case of the programs themselves, uh, for the example and also for the real one, there is only one jump instruction at the very end, which jumps back to zero. So it's basically an uh, infinite loop until A is zero. And for my real puzzle input, that's the same. Um, yeah, we jump back to zero until A is zero. Uh, yeah, zero. Yeah, the the other instructions are pretty straightforward. Uh, most of them are just uh, simple operations such as uh, XORing to registers or printing something. Uh, you also have to take into account when printing that it's uh, that there is an, a modulo eight included and it also is supposed to be separated by commas so that's why I have a special has printed boolean um, that adds commas in between values and yeah then I have the main run function which initializes the instruction pointer at zero and then runs through the program. If the instruction pointer is ever um, outside of the program, so basically after the program, the program ends or halts. And otherwise, I just do a basically switch case, which in Python is match case, um, on the instruction that is located at the instruction pointer. And I simply run the the function that is associated with it. And that's all there is to part one. It, uh, if I run this, it, oops, yeah, it outputs uh, the solution for part one, which is a common separated list of values. Part two is another story. In part two, you're supposed to make uh, changes to register A so that the program outputs itself. So basically that the output of a program, so for this example, would be this. And in my case, the expected output of my program would be this. So this is a bit of a tricky <laughs> thing to do pull off I had to think about this for quite a while uh, first I first step that I did was uh, finding out what my program actually does and to do that I listed basically what each instruction does and try to uh, simplify it uh, so basically the majority of the instructions are just uh, to basically determine register B's value, which is printed out in the end. Then there's also an operation that basically shifts the register A by uh, three to the right. So basically uh, it um, moves register A for the next three bit value. Register C is just a temporary value and well so um, in the end we jump back to the start. I did reduce the instruction to a simpler form. I didn't 
end up using this, but I could have used this to optimize part two. But basically I compute register B, print it, and then um, this could also be uh, written as I, oops, right shift register A by three. Or as I've written it here, I uh, divide it by eight, which is the same. Yeah, but that didn't really help me find out what the A would have to be uh, for this um, for this program to output itself. So instead, I tried to basically do the program in reverse. So start with register A at zero, determine which value I need to put in to get. Uh, the correct output and then uh, left shift it by 3 so multiply it by 8 and then do that uh, over and over again until I get the correct output to do that I go through the entire program backwards because um, since the a value goes down from its initial value to 0 I start at zero and go back uh, so I need to run through the program backwards mm. I get the instruction at that position so in the first run that would be the last instruction and I have a list of possible A's or well it's, this is a set not a list a set of possible A's uh, which at first just contains the number zero I go through all the possible A's which in this case is just one I remove it from the set and I multiply it by eight so basically I shift it left by three so there is now space for a three bit value which can be zero through seven so I uh, try out every single one by setting register A to the existing A plus 0 through 7. I set B and C to 0, so basically I initialize the program, uh, set the output list to, uh, to be empty, which I created a sec separate out function for part 2 so to simply add the, uh, the output to a list instead of printing it and then I run the program so if I now have at least one output and the output at position 0 is the ins expected instruction then this is a possible A for this uh, possible A register value for this um, position of the program and I add it to the set of possible A's and if I run this over and over again I end up uh, basically reverse engineering the A value that would or the possible A values that would yield this program and there are actually multiple ones it's not just one so in my case that would be like uh, I think it's like 10 or something I'll just print them out so that's actually more <laughs> so every one of these numbers uh, if I set the register A to it at the beginning of the program would make the program output itself but uh, part 2 requests the lowest uh, positive initial value so I simply print the lowest of these values which in my case is uh, this huge number and to test if this actually works I created a copy of uh, the, the puzzle input and just set register A to this, uh, or to this value and then I ran this program again 
don't need to print this right now and if everything works the program should output itself which as you can see it does cool yeah this was a bit of a uh, tough one so uh, <laughs> I'm glad that this works. I really don't know what else I would have done if it didn't work. But this was really tough. And I had a hiccup at part two because at first I tried to look for a single possible A, which it turned out uh, the, that uh, if you just use the first output here that works, you uh, don't you are unable to uh, reverse engineer the whole program so for example I would get to uh, these would work but here a 3 would be impossible because of the value that A has at that point yeah very difficult thank you for your solution Marcel Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you all for watching and see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.